you guys have some standout individual performances that you have <coughs> defensive MVP for the year? For the year? I think uh, if I had one, it would be between uh, Bud and Avery. <laughs> Bud Dupree or Avery Williams? What about Blake McClain? Blake McClain, uh, I thought he played um, very well uh, for a newcomer. I think he, you know, he probably was the best newcomer he played. What well, makes Bud special? What makes Avery special? Um, Bud is not only athletic and you know has all the tools, but he's very smart too. You tell him to do something, and he does it. You know, he can adjust on the run. He's got football intelligence, and that's probably what makes him special. What about a Avery um, is just a tremendous worker. Studies the game. Uh, wants to. Always be one step ahead of his opponent. He's putting in the extra time. He's he's focused every practice, every meeting to be the best player he can be. DJ, how do you bring the team back after you go through something like you guys went through Saturday night? Well, it's tough. You know, you, you go through a bad loss, and you know sometimes people may lose confidence, or you know guys uh, are really down. So you just got to be a coach. You know, you, you go through that when you're a coach, and you got to get them back up. And you got to get them focused on the next opponent. Mark talked about sort of the the problems it caused when you had so many guys missing in the secondary and you try to move one guy around and then one problem leads to another problem. Did, did it just feel like there were no answers um, with what you had to do in the, in the back end there? It just was a challenge, you know. You just, you got guys in different spots so sometimes you're afraid to call something different because you're not sure exactly how that player is going to play so, or, you know, how he may react to a new call, but it just makes it a tough challenge. I know offense has dealt with it this year, so it's just a hard challenge. Uh, this, unlike the uh, days ago when Tennessee and Kentucky was a rival of the game, um, you, you, you lose respect for being hard to get the most. You can't use that as a motivator. How, how difficult is it going to be to get these guys ready to play? Uh, I think that uh, you know our guys got a chance to get a W, so they only got one chance left. You know, so I think that they're going to be fired up and ready. Uh, their offensive line is the best part of the unit. They block very well. These guys are big and athletic and they've had a lot of a lot of starts and a lot of games. They're veteran players. We were talking about Avery earlier about hard worker studies hard. Does, that, does he play above his athleticism and cover that? I think he's pretty athletic too. I wasn't, you know, saying that he wasn't athletic because those are his biggest qualities. But uh, I do think it makes him the best player he can be. It does. That he studies the game and he's the best he can be mentally on Saturday, as well as physically. Talk about Khalid's development and play late in the season. Khalid's done some good things, um, you know, uh, mixed and matched with him and Trayvon throughout the year. And uh, they each have their attributes that they bring to the team. And, you know, sometimes they, they play really well and sometimes they haven't played as good. Um, but he's, he's gotten better and, uh, you know, looking forward to working with him this offseason, even after this game. Is there an element of, you know, when this thing is over that you will sort of be relieved a little bit that you can stop and work with guys without a win or a loss at stake on Saturday? Well, you just have more time. You know, you've, you've got to get the critical uh, corrections in each week uh, because you've got to get what's ready for that game that week, whereas in the offseason you can start from scratch and really build the player. Once the season starts rolling, when you're in, right in the middle of it, certainly the SEC schedule, and as problems become apparent, is it is it much harder to fix them, you know, with the with the train in motion? You got your time. Your time is limited. Yeah, because you only got so many days, so many practices before the next game. What what to you is the most important thing to fix in the spring? From a defense Slash fall, yeah. Oh, I, I think we just fundamentally have got to to be sound in every aspect. You know, we just we've got to understand the defense and how it works and make sure that each player knows exactly his job to every situation that he may face, you know, and be and to be sound fundamentally is going to get you there. Is this another patchwork effort Saturday? I mean, obviously, Mark said Nate is out getting his knee scoped. You had some other guys get sort of beat up in that last game and have been all year. Is this going to be another mix and match day Saturday? We, we won't be, uh, you know, full speed, but uh, you know, it's going to be the next guy up mentality, and whoever's ready to go is going to play. What, DJ, what about Zadarius? How do you feel like he's played this year, and what does he need to improve on? Uh, Zadarius has done some good things. Um, you know, he's only been here 
you know, one, one season as well, and um, you know has uh, played well uh, at times. And is is sound, very sound in the run game, and um, uh, he's gotten better every week as well. You know, I thought he had a, a good game on uh, Saturday, and he has only played football now for so two, uh, three years total in his entire career. You know, because he played basketball in high school, so his room for growth for uh, a player that's going to be a senior is much higher than most players that are going to be a senior. DJ, which player or players on the defense have been your most pleasant surprise this year? Uh, Blake McClain did a you know a good job for us as a uh, as a true freshman, and um, you know he's a guy that we've had to play at a lot of different positions and, and fill him in. He's been corner, he's been safety, he's been the nickel. He's done a good job for us in those spots. If you had a full complement of guys, but you didn't have holes to, to patch, what position would you most like to play him at? I think that uh, Blake has been very good for us this year at nickel. I think that uh, nickel has been the best position for him this year. DJ, you guys have tried as hard to be as multiple as you can be with all your personality limitations. New defense, young guys. How well have they handled what you all threw? Uh, they've done a good job at times, and at times they haven't, you know. And um, we've tried to be as multiple as possible. We've tried to develop a, a bunch of different packages, and you guys probably can see that by how often we rotate. It's, you know, we've got different packages that we try to get in the game to get our best players on the field for certain situations. And in and, and certain times, in certain games, they've, they've done a very good job, you know. And then other times it hasn't as well. So I'd say it's about 50 50. Is, is the, I guess, what you're trying to do with recruiting and so forth in the future, where you won't be qu quite as package oriented, that you'll have guys that are flexible enough that they can play and you won't have to sub in and out quite as much? We may, we may, you know, um, it, it, it usually depends on who we're playing, what they're doing, and what, who I think the best players are for certain situations. It may, it may be that way though, I know what you're saying, we may have a guy that's versatile enough that he can do both. He's big enough to play the run, he's fast enough to play the pass. But a lot of it's predicated on what your opponent does. Correct.